How's it going everyone? My name is Mr. Boss for the win and I think I have a pretty nice topic for you guys today. So if you would leave a rating on the video, I would really appreciate it. Anyways, what I want to do today is talk about Call of Duty Ghosts. Now, all of my opinions and thoughts among this video are essentially going to be based on the information that Drifter uh, has provided us. I, I'm, I'm not declaring that I have come up with any of this information or speculation, but simply stating an opinion on something that Drifter has made a video that he uh, really did a good job of formulating a good bit of information about. So if you haven't seen that video, I would recommend go watching it before you uh, check out this video uh, because it is going to be based around the information, like I said, that he has made in that video. So I guess I'll start with the title and the theme. Call of Duty Ghosts, you know, that kind of worries me because if you didn't realize, obviously, Call of Duty's really follow the theme of the title that they are given. Uh, obviously, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was based around uh, a Modern Warfare era style with modern weaponry and technology and kill streaks and uh, equipment and etc. Same thing with Modern Warfare 2, even a little more advanced. You saw more advanced kill streaks, advanced weaponry, uh, etc. And uh, you could even in the older Call of Duties like World at War. Obviously, you knew that was going to be about the World um, World War 2 and uh, everything that was evolved around uh, you know the war and how it affected the world, etc. And even the Black Ops, like Black Ops 2, uh, you knew it was going to be about uh, a time period that didn't exist yet. So we we're going to see futuristic weapons and ideas that uh, haven't accumulated yet in our own society. So Call of Duty Ghosts, I can only imagine is going to have to do something around. It's going to have to revolve around the realm of stealth and not being seen and secret operations and undercover aspects because when you think of a ghost you think of oh they are invisible spooky not to be seen um, you know haunter like ghostly uh, obviously um, so what I'm thinking is it's going to be in the realm of like I said secret agent ops or something like that something that is unclassified and that kind of has me worried for the multiplayer aspect I think the campaign could be awesome Call of Duty does a great job with campaign the campaigns are awesome but for the multiplayer, if it's going to be themed around secret operatives and ghosts, I think there could be too much emphasis on stealth perks and be not being seen and almost crisis-like tactics with the invisibility suit. Uh, obviously, if you don't know with crisis, you can get invisibility armor, uh, which allows you to uh, you know, go invisible and no one can see you. All they can see is your outline. And that's one thing I want to avoid because, uh, as I'm going to talk about in a little bit, I think that Treyarch, or not Treyarch, who, who's ever making this, Activision, Infinity Ward, you know, Sledgehammer, Neversoft, I think they are drifting into the realm of other games too much, and I will explain that in a little bit. So, like I said, I've already addressed some issues with the title and the theme and, uh, you know, how that really could be portrayed, and now I want to talk about some of the features. So, Drifter talked about one of the features, which was a hugging the wall feature now when you think of hugging the wall feature uh, the first game that really comes to mind for me is Gears of War now this is all the Gears of War not only the newest one Gears of War Judgment but if you don't know Gears of War is a third person um, you know uh, shooter game where essentially you're looking over the right shoulder of all the characters and Gears of War makes a big emphasis on if you tap the A button close to a wall you will hug the wall meaning your back or your side will be to the wall and you will then have the ability to look around the wall with your gun and shoot now I don't know how this would work in a third or a first person aspect because obviously Call of Duty will will always be a first person shooter but in a third person aspect for me at least it's a little clunky and it's a little awkward and what I mean by that is uh, obviously I'm not a Gears of War player a religious Gears of War player uh, I do all right meaning I can get like a 1 KD which is I think is pretty impressive in Gears of War but uh, a lot of Gears guys have told me that that's not very good at all so um I think it works really well with a third person. It's kind of clunky and awkward for me, but I don't know how the hug to wall feature would work in something like Call of Duty. To me, that style just promotes a a type of game like this young man right here who's using the sniper and just kind of like sitting in the back of the map. He doesn't have like any confirms and you know, it just kind of promotes that gameplay that I you know that I like to avoid and I, I like guys who run around like to go to objectives and uh, play smart and uh, you know I just feel like a hugging wall feature where you're able to look around it just encourages a creeper mode which uh, is something that I, I wouldn't like to see in another Call of Duty the next thing he talked about is something obviously they took the the uh, hug the wall feature would be something from Gears the Microsoft and Epic guys 
Drifter also mentioned that there was going to be a slide to prone feature, essentially being uh, the Dolphin Dive's younger brother or older brother. Now this comes directly from EA and Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor and Battlefield are notoriously known for uh, the, the slide to prone feature where you can, um, if you're running and press the dive button, you will do like a little baseball slide. Imagine a uh, a baseball guy coming into home and he does the little slide. That's what it really looks like. It's uh, You can't, at least in um, Battlefield and Medal of Honor, you can't shoot during this process, but it does give you like a little quick slide under objects and get to objectives and get to walls really quickly. Um, and I can't believe I died by that bouncing Betty there. Wow, I, I had engineer on so I knew that it was going to be delayed. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, this bouncing Betty goes off for no reason. So, But yeah, that's one thing I'm worried about as well because... I, I feel like Call of Duty might be taking from the camp of others too much when they need to be focusing on already what they do successful. Um, as you can see, I run into this Wally right here, and I'm like, oh, crap. Because um, <laughs> the Wally is really dangerous, but I was I think I EMP'd him, so uh, that worked out for the best. But yeah, I think Call of Duty needs to stick with what they are doing well and not worry about other games because not to say that these features are bad in their particular games because in Gears of War, the wall hugging works great. In Medal of Honor and Battlefield, the um, slide to prone works great as well. Or the slide, like the sliding dive works great in that game. But I'm not so sure about Call of Duty. And I don't think this is the year to go experimenting with things that might be a little bit out of the ordinary. If you had had four, three or four successful Call of Duties back to back to back, I mean the ones that have zero complaints, that uh, almost 95% community approval rating, yeah, it might be time to step out of the box. But even with Black Ops 2, the Black Ops 2 camp has still upset a lot of people, and I know a lot of people are scared about what they're going to do with the next Call of Duty and how that will affect the future gameplays, etc., how everything is going to evolve and how everything is going to revolve. So there's this imminent fear in the air that there might be something bad or some change happening. And now I think is not the time to experiment with new gameplay tactics, strategies, and ideas. I think that is something that should be reserved for another time and another day where you have a more, you know, settled audience that is set on your game and is willing to accept these changes that might come about in the future. So, in my opinion, if these changes work well, Call of Duty Ghost might be a very good Call of Duty. I say this all the time because it's true. We know nothing yet, and if they, are, if they have the ability to execute the gameplay tactics, strategies, scenarios, and ideas like I think they can, then yeah, it's going to be a great game. But of course, there's obviously, uh, Thunder put it really great, there's always a little bit of toxin in the well that really dilutes the entire game and makes it difficult to succeed as a whole, which is something that game developers are obviously trying to avoid and something that should be uh, a strategy for game developers outside the Call of Duty realm as well. So, uh, yeah guys, these are just my opinions on Call of Duty Ghost, what I think uh, the future might be. Hopefully the future is bright, hopefully the future is not whack, and hopefully we have another great year of Call of Duty coming out, whether it be Call of Duty Ghost or something else. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Take care. I'll see you in the next episode, and um, have a nice day.